begin with thanking Frederick and uh, Julian. Oh, story. Let me begin thanking Frederick and Julian for the invitation to come back to Montreal. I was a postdoc here 2014 to 2016, so it's always nice to come back and reminisce of my postdoc days. So as Julian said, so the title of my talk is Shrinking Gradient Calorie to Solitons, and everything I'm going to talk about today is a culmination of several works. So the first is a paper with myself, Alex Drewell, and uh, Song Sun. So I'll abbreviate that as CDS. Um, it's also a paper of myself, um, Charlie Sifferali, who's a student of um, Song Sun and Alix. And then a more recent paper of my Bamler, um, myself, Charlie, Sifferali, and uh, Alex. Um, all right, uh, the hopes. Spell the same wrong. All right, so I'll abbreviate this as B C C D. All right, and this will be um, C C D. Okay, great. So um, okay, so let me just begin. So the topic of what we're going to talk about today is killer manifolds. So let me just begin with a little introduction on killer manifolds. All right. So introduction. So suppose that you've got a complex manifold M N with a with a dot with a complex structure J. So this is a complex manifold, and N is the complex dimension of, of M, all right? So what's a complex manifold? It's a manifold where the um, coordinate charts are in CM, all right? So you've got an open covering onto um, open subsets of CM, such that the transition functions of these coordinate charts are holomorphic, all right? So if you look at the coordinate charts that just between the overlap, these guys are holomorphic, all right? So given a complex structure, um, this means that, so given a complex manifold, so given this covering, this means that there's a well, there's a well-defined way to multiply by I inside each tangent space, all right? So this is an endomorphism J. So J is an endomorphism, the section of the endomorphism of the tangent model of M that squares to be equal to negative the density, all right? So that's essentially what a complex manifold is, all right? So you've got a way to multiply by I inside each tangent space. So J squared is equal to the density, all right? So, um, so some examples of complex manifolds include, um, include CN. Okay, so the first example is just CN. So that's covered by one chart, right? So it's a trivial chart. And then you also have PN. Okay, so you've got a complex projective space. All right. And from complex projective space, you can generate lots more examples of complex manifolds just by taking the zero set of homogeneous polynomials. Okay, so given a complex manifold, we endow with the Romanian metric. So we endow a complex manifold with a Romanian metric um, on M, all right? And we say that metric is scalar if two conditions are satisfied. The first condition is that J is an isometry with respect to G. Um, so what that means is that with respect to G, A, so what that means is that J of, it just means that G preserves J, all right? So J, so G of JJ is equal to G normally, all right? So J is an isometry with respect to G. So this can always be achieved just by averaging over the action of J. But, okay, so once you're given this, you can compose G with J inside the first argument, and this gives you a two form, okay? So um, we get a two form, omega, which is equal to G. You compose G with J inside the, the first thing, this thing becomes anti-symmetric. This defines a two form. And if this two form is closed, then we say that our manifold is scalar, all right? So that's the Kähler condition. And we call this form the Kähler form, okay? So this is equivalent. So this, this condition is equivalent to J being parallel with respect to the levi Civita connection of G, all right? So, um, so this is equivalent to J being parallel with respect to um, G, okay? So we've got standard examples of Kähler manifolds that include CN endowed with the flat metric, Flat metric, okay, and also PN endowed with the Fubini study metric. All right, and then again, you so examples of Kähler manifolds are plentiful. You can just take zero sets of homogeneous polynomials inside PN to make lots more examples. All right, so um, okay, so uh, so you can modify a Kähler form by delta bar for real value function, and this gives you the notion of a Kähler class. Okay, so suppose that omega is Kähler. Um, suppose omega is Kähler. And phi from M to R is a 
real value, smooth real value, value function, which is small in the C2 norm. All right. So then um, this implies that the omega plus I del del bar of phi is Kähler, where um, I del del bar phi is locally given by, this is a local expression in local coordinate charts, I times sigma del to phi over del z a del z bar l dz k wedge dz bar of l. All right. So we say that two killer forms are on the same killer class if they differ by I del bar of a function. All right. So um so this gives us a notion of killer class. The, the notion of okay. So um okay, so uh so this gives us an equivalence relation where two Kähler forms are equivalent if and only if they differ by I del del bar of a function. And we call the equivalence classes the Kähler classes. All right. So let me just get my eraser. Okay. So the question on every, most people's lips is probably why do we care about Kähler manifolds? Okay. So the thing about Kähler manifolds is that um, there's a nice expression for the Ricci curvature of a Kähler. There's a nice expression for the um, Ricci, Ricci curvature of a Kähler manifold in local coordinates. All right. It's determined by a smooth real value function locally. Okay, so let me explain this. So why do we care? Um, so this is something that's unique to Kähler geometry and is not true for Romanian geometry in general. All right. So in Romanian geometry, the Ricci tensor is, is, a, is a matrix, an FBA matrix, whereas in Kähler geometry, it's just determined by a, it's got a smooth potential. It's determined by a smooth function. Okay, so let me explain this. Okay, so you're given your Romanian metric. You get your Ricci curvature of your Romanian metric, and as it turns out, the Ricci curvature is also um, so the Ricci curvature is also J invariant. All right. So the Ricci of G is also J invariant. So what you can do is you can compose the Ricci form with um, you can compose the Ricci you can compose the Ricci curvature with the complex structure in the first component, and then this gives you uh, this again is symmetric, and it also defines a two form. So this is a two form. And as it turns out, this is closed. This form is closed, all right? So how do you see it's closed? You look at what, look, what it looks like locally. So locally, it looks like, um, locally, the Ricci form, this looks like, um, whoops. So negative I delta bar log, the determinant of gij bar, all right? Oops, well, I guess I should change my notation here. GKL bar, all right? Where GKL bar is the um, expression for the, so this is just the Romani metric in holomorphic and anti-holomorphic coordinates, all right? So basically this is a smooth real value function. And then the, re the whole Ricci form um, is determined by the, it's just determined by the derivatives, the mixed holomorphic and anti-holomorphic derivatives of, of this function, all right? So, um, so in particular, in particular, what we will need is, so you've got two forms on a Kähler manifold. You've got the Ricci form and you've got the Kähler form. And if one is a multiple of the other, we say over Kähler Einstein. Okay. But in particular, if um, K, if one is a positive multiple of the other, then we're saying we're Kähler Einstein final. All right. So that's what we need. Okay, great. So that's um, what a Kähler manifold is. So now let me give the, give the setup for today's talk. All right. So, um, the setup is as follows. Okay, so we take a compact Kähler manifold. Okay, so let M, so let M N or right, omega zero be a compact Kähler manifold. Okay. So it's a compact Kähler manifold. Kähler manifold. All right. And N is a complex dimension. Is a complex dimension of M. Okay. So what we want to consider is a Kähler Ricci flow, um, which is a one parameter family of Kähler metrics on this manifold that evolve via the Ricci form, all right? So the equation we want to consider today is partial omega of t del t is equal to negative rho of omega of t. Right. Well, this thing is a Ricci form of omega of t. So this is the Ricci form, all right? And subject to the initial condition, so you want the initial Ricci form to be equal to omega zero, which is the initial, the initial data, all right? So this is um, the Kähler Ricci flow. So anyone can write down an equation. So then you got to ask yourself, have you short time existence and uniqueness of solutions? So as it turns out, on a Kähler manifold, this equation is strictly parabolic. And so you always have short time existence and uniqueness of solutions of this guy, right? So, so this equation is strict 
strictly parabolic, strictly parabolic, which implies just from the standard uh, standard solution theory, or just from the standard theory, that there exists a solution um, to this equation uh, on the interval zero t, where t is strictly positive. Okay. So what is of interest to us today is um so the this the this t here, all right. So this this capital T. Okay. So um so how do we characterize the maximal time of existence of the Kähler Ricci flow? Okay. So we know it always exists in some small time interval, but we want what we're concerned, first of all, is characterizing the maximal time of existence, right? How do we characterize this t? Okay. So um so one condition that you need is that the um that you always remain k well so the first thing is this this preserves the kilarity of the of the solution right but you always need the scalar the killer form to be positive definite right if, so if the solution exists then you know that omega t is always strictly positive right so that will give us necessary conditions on t in order for um for the for the solution to exist okay so how do we characterize t so how do we characterize T, which is the maximal time of existence of the Kähler Ricci flow, um, is capital T. Well, we do the following. So let's so let's study again the um, so let's study again the Kähler Ricci flow. So let's study again the, the equation. Right. So let's take cohomology classes, right? So this will give us the evolution of the Kähler class. This is the cohomology class of omega of t. Right. So this implies that the Kähler class evolves via the Cohomology class of the Ricci form, right? Of the evolving metric, but this is fixed, right? So the Ricci form is always in the first turn class, right? So this is this is a this is two pi. Okay, so the, the cohomology class of the Ricci form is a topological constant, right? It's just the first turn class, right? So it's just determined by the topology of the manifold. Okay, so it's fixed. So you can solve this um this equation to see that the um that the killer class of the evolving metric just moves, right? It just moves along. So it's just equal to the initial guy, negative two pi, the first turn class times T. All right. So in particular, um, so in particular, you know that if you have a solution on zero T, then the, cl the, killer cl the class is always killer. And so this right-hand side has to be strictly positive, right? So that gives you a necessary condition for existence, right? So this implies that um, on, the maximal existence time, you know that omega of t is always the killer class. You're always in a killer class. So this is always strictly positive. So you know that omega is zero, negative two pi um, c one of m of t is strictly greater than zero um, on the for okay on t for t in the interval zero t. All right. So in particular, so this is all topological data. So this is the killer class, the initial killer class, which is part of the data. And this is the cohomology, this is the first turn class, which is determined by the manifold. All right. So as it turns out, so this is a necessary, right? So this is necessary for the existence of the solution. But as it turns out, this is also sufficient. Okay. So for the existence. Okay. And this gives us a complete characterization of the maximal time of existence of the Kähler Ricci flow. Okay. So let me write down the, the result here. So um okay, great. So this is a theorem. And it basically says that this is an ethanonia, right? So this is a theorem of Zhao, um, Suji, and Tian and Zhang, which basically says that, um, so let T be the supremum of a T positive, such that this cohomology class is strictly positive. Right. So T is the supremum of uh, the T's such that omega T negative two pi T C one of M is strictly positive. Then the Kähler Ricci flow exists on the interval zero T on the interval zero T. All right. So um okay. So not only is it necessary, but it's also sufficient. Right. So the maximal time of existence is characterized by the um, the ma maximal time of existence is characterized by the um, by topological data. All right, by the initial data of the metric, 
and also um, the first term class. Okay, so the question we want to talk about today is, so given that we know the maximum time of existence of the Kieler Ricci flow, how does the behavior of the flow, what, so what happens whenever we approach this maximal time of existence, right? So that's what we want to, we want to understand today, right? So what happens, what happens as, oops. So what happens as we approach the maximal existence time of the flow from below, all right? So, um, right, so we will assume that T is finite, okay? So in this talk, we want to be concerned with finite time singularities of the Kieler Ricci flow, right? So not the long time behavior. So we assume that T is finite, right? So then you have a finite time singularity of the Kieler Ricci flow. Um, and we know from work of Hamilton, and this can be characterized by the fact that the curvature blows up, right? So the full curvature blows up. So then we know from the work of Hamilton that the supremum of the curvature tensor, oops, is equal to positive infinity. Um, okay, great. So this is a thanks to Hamilton. Okay. So um, so this is kind of analytic data. All right. So let's see what happens on complex surfaces. All right. So let me give you the situation for the behavior on complex surfaces. All right. So we'll recall some work of um, Ben Weinkov and John Song, um, who studied this question uh, for complex surfaces. Um, great. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so just need a few team boards here. Right. So, um, great. So the question is so, what can we say? What can we say in the lowest dimension? Okay, what can we say when the dimension is equal to two? Right. Oops. Okay. So the assumptions is we've got a complex scalar surface and we've got a finite time singularity of the Kieler Ricci flow. So then, um, so then what can you say? So we'll have, this is work by Song and Weinkov. Song and Weinkov. All right. Okay. So, um, right. So let's assume that this is initial time and this is the singular time. Okay. So uh, I'll do the same here. So t is equal to zero here and t is equal to um, Singular time, all right. So um, so basically the behavior can be encoded using the volume and using the diameter. So you've got your Kieler Ricci flow on a complex surface. It has a finite time singularity. Then either the volume will go to zero or it won't go to zero, right? So um, so that's the first the first two cases. So either you're non-collapsed or you're collapsed. So here the limit, the volume of M of omega of T is strictly positive as t approaches a singular time. So this is non-collapsing. Or um, the limit of the volume is equal to zero. Okay. So there are the so so um so the limit of the volume of m omega of t is equal to zero as t approaches t. Right. So um so there's actually okay great. So Limit of the volume of omega t is equal to zero as t approaches t. All right. So you've got you're either not collapsed or you're or you're collapsed. All right. This is this this is collapsing. Collapsing. Okay. So um, if you are non-collapsed, then what the Kieler Ricci flow is doing is just contracting negative one curves. So if you tell me, hey, I've got a finite time singularity and I'm non-collapsed, then I can tell you the flow is contracting. Um, negative one curves, right? So here's your negative one curves. And as you approach the singular time, um, these negative one curves get contracted to points. Okay. So you develop conical singularities. All right. So this is your initial, this is your initial flow. All right. So, so that's if you're non-collapsing. So then you look at the case where you're collapsing. And if you're collapsing, then I, so, you know, the volume is going to zero. So then you can look at the diameter. Right. So then either the diameter goes to zero in the limit. So you assume you're collapsing, then you look at the diameter. So then the diameter stays bounded away from zero or it goes to zero. Right. So that's the dichotomy in the collapsing case. Okay. So then you can assume that the limit of the supremum 
of the diameter. Um, I'll just clean this up a little bit. The limb of the premium of the diameter of m omega of t is equal to zero. Oh no, it's strictly greater than zero. Or um, is equal to zero. The limit of the soup, the diameter is um, is equal to zero. Okay. Of m of omega of t is equal to zero, right? So this is t goes to capital T. Okay. So if the diameter is bounded from below, then what you know is that the initial manifold is birational to a ruled surface. So basically, you are a, a P1 bundle over some Riemann surface, and then you blow up finitely many points. So, so you're a P1 bundle, so you're a ruled surface, you're a P1 bundle. Um, so M omega zero is birational to a ruled surface, rational to a ruled surface, okay? So you're gonna be, um, so you're gonna be some P1 bundle over some Riemann surface. And then on top of that, you've got some negative one curves in here, right? Because you're birational, okay? And then if the flow, um, so if, if the diameter is, is, is strictly greater than zero, then you're collapsing onto the surface. The fibers are being contracted to points in finite time, right? So the fibers here are contracting. Um, so yes, the fibers are contracting. And then the limit, you just are, are on the base. All right. So that's if you know that the diameter <laughs> is, is strictly, the, the limb soup of the diameter is, um, is, is strictly greater than zero. All right. And if the limb, so if the volume collapses and the diameter goes to zero, then that's called finite time extinction. Um, and what happens is basically you're, you're um, you're at the Pezzo surface, so you're just a final manifold, your final surface, right? So this is the case, then you're at the Pezzo surface. Um, oops. You're at the Pezzo surface, all right? Um, and your initial Keeler form is in some multiple of the, so your 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 underlying manifold is at the Pezzo surface. Your initial Keeler form is in a positive multiple of the first turn class. So if you're Fano, then this is positive. This is a killer class. And then you're just in some positive multiple of that. Um, so lambda is strictly greater than zero here. Um, and the manifold just contracts to a point in finite time. All right. As T approaches T, as T approaches T, the manifold just gets contracted to a point. Okay. So this is called finite time extinction. Okay. So um, so this is reminiscent in, in for the if you look at the Rye metric on S2. And you're on the Ricci flow, it just contracts to a point. All right. So that's the that's the that's the um real dimensional version of this. All right. But in general, if if the volume goes to zero and the diameter goes to zero, then um then you're in this case here. Okay. So so based on this picture, the information you get from Song and Weinkov is um so basically C0 information concerning the killer Ricci flow. All right. So here's your initial metric, and this is what happens. Okay. So um so the question we're dealing with today is we want to understand how the Ricci flow enters these singularities, right? So so you know from Hamilton that the curvature blows up as you hit the singular time, right? So so the, the curvature is going to blow up at these points here, right? Because the the flow stops, okay? And then in this case, it's just going to blow up at every point, right? So it's just going to because it stops. And then similarly here, right? So what I want you to imagine doing is you get yourself a magnifying glass, right? And then you look at the flow as it hits these singularities. And the question is, what do you see? Right. So what we understand today is how does a Ricci flow enter these singular times, right? So, um, okay. So, so if taking a magnifying glass and looking at how, how these singularities develop is corresponds to um, taking a parabolic rescaling of the flow, right? So you rescale the flow, you reparameterize the flow, you rescale it, and that, and that, in a sense, magnifies the flow, and then you see what object you get from that. Okay, so um, let me talk about that. Okay, great. So, um, so this is called a parabolic rescaling of the flow, and this is what you do in order to see. I'll just leave that on the board. So why not? Okay, so let's assume so that m g of t. Oops. Yeah, let's just look at the metric. All right. Suppose that m g of t is a killer region flow. On the time interval zero, capital T, where T is finite, where T is um is finite. All right. And uh, 
more chalk here, you know, I'm great. And suppose that we assume that M is compact and Kähler, compact and Kähler, right? So you know that um, there's a finite time singularity. So you know the curvature blows up at some point, right? So, so you know, then we assume that the curvature um, goes to positive infinity as you approach the singular time, all right? So, 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 so we can classify the singularity development depending on how fast the curvature blows up, right? So if we say that the, the singular time is a type one singularity, type one singularity, if, um, um, so if there exists a C positive such that the supremum of the curvature, okay, thanks very much, Frederick, yeah. I, uh, I kind of destroyed the talk, or I destroyed the chalk, not the talk. So, um, so, uh, so let me just, so as I was saying, I said to Frederick, so basically, um, so we consider our Kähler Ricci flow on, on a finite time interval zero T, where T is finite, we assume M is compact Kähler. So then we know that we have a finite time singularity. So we know by Hamilton that the curvature blows up somewhere. All right. So then I was saying that you can classify the singularity development depending on the rate at which this curvature blows up. Right. So we say that the C is a finite time type one singularity. If there exists a C such that the curvature doesn't blow up faster than one over T negative T, all right? For all T, um, for all T in zero T, all right? So the curvature doesn't blow up faster than one over, one over T, all right? So we assume this is the case, and then we do a parabolic rescaling. So, um, so we assume this is the case, and then we do a parabolic rescaling. Um, so let's do that. So let me tell you what I mean by, okay, so we assume this is the case, so then take a parabolic rescaling, take a parabolic rescaling, right? I'm gonna tell you what it is right now. But what it really means is you just get a magnifying glass and you look at how the flow behaves as it approaches a singular time, all right? So take a parabolic rescaling, um, and what you have is the following. So what do we do? So we take a sequence that lambda i be a sequence converting to infinity, and we consider the rescaled Kähler Ricci flows. Consider the rescaled um, Kähler Ricci flows. Um, so g of t, g i of t is equal to so lambda i g um, of oops t plus t over lambda i, right? Okay, so you multiply by the factor lambda, which is going to positive infinity. So that means spatially you're getting bigger, right? right. And the time interval here, T is in the time interval negative lambda, capital T times zero, right? And this is going to negative infinity. Right. So you're spread, this parabolic rescaling has the effect of spreading out the spatial derivatives, right? And lengthening the time interval, okay? So it's magnifying, magnifying what's happening, okay? So, okay, so this is now a sequence of Kähler Ricci flows, right? Parameterized by the index i. So then what you do is you, um, so you've got a sequence of pointed Kähler Ricci flows. Okay, and what you can do is, um, so p is a member of m, and then you can take the pointed gram of Hausdorff, you can take a limit, right? So you can take a pointed gram of Hausdorff limit of this, or is it cheaper? Remember, we take a and, and the object you get is the title of the talk. All right, it's a straight ingredient, Kähler Ricci soliton. Okay, so this is due to work by our neighbor, right? So this is under the assumption of type one Ricci flow. So I'm assuming that I've got a type one singularity. Sorry, I've got a type one finite time singularity, which means the curvature doesn't blow up faster than this. All right, and um. So the object you get is, is this, which I'm going to define in a moment, but it's, going, it's, it's a Romanian manifold, right? So it's got bounded curvature with bounded curvature, with bounded curvature, right? The reason being it's got bounded curvature is because the curve, because we're, we're rescaling, so the curvature is going to be bounded in the rescaling limit. So that's carried over to the limit. Um, it's complete, okay? It's complete and it's actually non-flat. So you don't bubble off. Um, so this is the result of Anders topping a motor. Okay. So you don't see flat space, right? 
Um, and there's topping on the mirror. Okay. On the mirror. Okay. So um, so what is this object? Um, I raise this, and I guess I want to keep my pretty picture. Raise this. Yeah. Okay. So so the picture you should have in mind is the following. Um, it's this one. So a uh, great. Um, oops, great. A little bit of chalk here. Okay, so you've got your um, so you got your initial manifold. You're on the Kähler Ricci flow, and oh no, it hits a finite time singularity. Right. So the curvature is blowing up. Okay, so you're going to get some some singular point here, right? As t approaches a singular time, right? So then you get your magnifying glass and you zoom in, and you see how is the singularity forming. Right? And what you will see is a Kähler Ricci flow. You just see a killer each, you, you, you just see, you'll see another killer each flow modeling the singular time. And this object is a shrinking gradient killer each solid form. Okay. So now let me give you the definition. All right. So, um, write it over here. And so I'll use that for the space. Um, okay, great. So, so um, the killer each solid form is a triple. So MGX is a shrinking gradient, is a shrinking. Um, Killer Ricci soliton. Killer Ricci soliton. Um, um, so shrinking Killer Ricci soliton. If, right? So to define a soliton, you need two pieces of data. You need a Ramanian metric and you need a vector field. So you need, so M omega, Mg is a complete Killer manifold. It's a complete Killer manifold. Killer manifold, all right? And X is a complete a real holomorphic vector field. Um, holomorphic vector field, right? By which I mean the flow of the vector field preserves the complex structure, right? So the complex structure I introduced initially, so the flow preserves it, okay? Um, and it satisfies the following equation. So we can, so the region curvature of G plus a half the lead derivative X of G is equal to G. Okay. So um so this is the the, the shrinking Killer Ricci soliton equation. Right. So um so this is a static thing. So M, so G is Ramani metric, the Ricci curvature. So the Einstein equation is Ricci curvature if G is equal to G, right? So it's a modified Einstein equation. So it's plus a half LX of G is equal to G. Okay. Um and we furthermore say that it's so this is a Shrinking gradient killer Ricci soliton, right? Okay. So you have this vector field X, and if X is the um, gradient of a smooth real value function, then we say it's gradient. Right. So if I guess people can't really read. That's a shame, isn't it? Right. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So uh, okay. So um great. So, um, okay. so if x, if x is um, so if x is equal to the gradient of f, where f from m to r is smooth, then this implies that then, then we say that 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 is gradient. Okay. So then apply this gradient. Okay. So um, so the simplest example to take is when x is equal to zero, right? In which case this term vanishes and you're just killer Einstein. You're killer Einstein final. You're a manifold with positive curvature. With you're a manifold with, with positive constant scalar curvature, right? So it's a generalization of the Einstein condition, right? So um so that's that's um so example, so when x is equal to zero, then um rule of omega is equal to omega, i.e. you're killer Einstein. Okay. So um so this is what killer Ricci solitons is. Um, it's a generalization of the killer Einstein killer Einstein condition. Um, so here I've drawn something dynamic appearing, and here I've defined something static, right? So the idea is, um, so if you're given this data of um, of a Ramani metric, a killer metric, and a holomorphic vector field, you can generate a solution of the Ricci flow. But it's not just any solution; it's a solution that's self-similar in the sense that it evolves via scaling and diffeomorphisms, right? So given this data. 
you can define a Kira Ricci flow. I'll define that in a minute. I'll show you how in a minute, just by flowing along the vector field X. And this is the object that appears here, All right? So we can view this equation dynamically or from a static viewpoint, okay? So, um, right, so, so the whole point is, so, um, so these guys model singularities of the Kira Ricci flow. Model singularities, model singularities of um, the Kehler Ricci flow. The Kehler Ricci flow. Okay. So how? So from the data of uh, from the data of a uh, the Kehler manifold on a holomorphic vector field, you can generate satisfying this equation. You can generate a self similar solution of the Kehler Ricci flow. Right. So let me tell you how. So suppose that MGX is a complete. String ingredient, string ingredient, killer Ricci soliton, string ingredient, killer Ricci soliton. Then you define um, a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms on, on the manifold just by flowing along the gradient, flowing along x, right? So negative x um, by t of x divided by 2t, right? Where five, oops, so five negative one is equal to the density. So this is a, a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms, which exists for all time because your vector field X is complete by assumption. Okay. So then, um, so your, your vector field X on the floorboard gives you, uh, your vector field X on the floorboard gives you a one parameter family of diffeomorphisms. Then you take your static metric G, right? You pull back G under this, this family of diffeomorphisms, all right? And then you rescale by negative T. Um, Right, and that gives you one parameter family of metrics. So that gives you a one parameter family of metrics. Um, and you can check that this defines a solution of the Kehler Ricci flow. So then, um, the, I might have got the constant wrong. So then the flow of this parameter family of metrics is, is via the Ricci curvature, and G is negative one is equal to the static metric. All right, so the metric is fixed. So this is a solution of the Kehler Ricci flow, which is self similar in the fact that it evolves via pullback and via scaling. All right. So, so this is exactly the object you get when you do the rescaling. Okay. So, um, so great. So that's what a Kehler Ricci soliton is. That's why we care. So the next question is to give you some, some examples. So let me do that next. Um, and then, uh, great. So we'll just get rid of my pretty picture here. I'm going to use this again. So. I don't want to redraw it. Okay, great. So, um, so the bottom line is given a killer Ricci soliton, a finite so given a killer Ricci flow, given a finite time singularity of the killer Ricci flow. If you're parabolic, you want to understand how it enters singularities. If you assume the the singularity is, if you assume the singularity is of type one, which means the curvature doesn't blow up too fast, then the object you blow off is a self similar solution, right? A killer Ricci soliton. Okay. So um, okay, so let me give you some examples. Okay, so okay, so the first example I've already mentioned is any killer Einstein manifold, any killer Einstein final manifold is, is a solution. All right. And the corresponding um killer Ricci flow will just contract it to a point. So if you look at the so if you take your static solution, you do this rescaling, then so then you're not flowing by anything and you're just scaling to a point as t goes to, to zero. All right. The volume, the whole thing just collapses. Okay, so that's that's a corresponding singularity that that the dot dot um that's a corresponding singularity of the Kehler Ricci flow that this this models. Okay. So we can also look at the flat Gaussian soliton, right? So the flat Gaussian killer shrink ingredient, killer Ricci soliton, shrink ingredient, killer Ricci soliton on CN. And this is the flat metric. Okay, so this is Ricci flat, and so it just stays static, right? It doesn't move at all, right? So just a flat metric, right? So so it just stays static. So this is the static solution. Okay. So um so we also have um the FIK example. So Feldman Imahan and Kanoff constructed a family of shrinking gradient killer HD solitons on CN blown up at a point. Right. So this is a total, I mean they did more general, but we just covered this example for today. So you take CN and then you just replace the origin with a PN negative one. Um, then you get the total space of the O negative one bundle over um, PN negative one. Right. 
and you've got a UN action on this space. And what they did was, so they worked, so you've, so they worked, you have a UN action on this space. So they worked on the dissymmetry, which reduced a soliton equation from a PDE to an ODE, which then they could solve explicitly. All right. So they constructed um, examples, which are UN invariant. Um, and uh, the Rasmus part of the conical, right? So if you look at the behavior that these guys um, reflect, so, if this, so this, this is a static guy. If you look at the corresponding behavior, it reflects it just this, this divisor contracting to a point, right? So the blow up, the exception of the divisor, which is a blow up, just contracts to a point in finite time. So, um, so if you run the correspond, so these are explicit. And if you run the corresponding Keeler Ricci flow, then it, uh, so then it just contracts the divisor to a point. Is that right? Okay. So um, okay. So uh, I mean, I'll just so um, that's all very exciting. So next, uh, so what about so what about one dimensions, right? So and and so and this is example three. So in one dimensions, you have you have two examples. You've got P one, and you've got C, right? They're, they're in one dimensions. So P1 is just a Fubini study, Killer Einstein, it just contracts to a point. So it's around matter on S2. And then C is just a, it's just the one dimensional version of this guy. Okay, so then what about two dimensions? What examples have we got? So um so two dimensions, you've got in two complex dimensions, you've got C2, you've got the FIK on C2 blown up at a point, right? It's coming from this. You've got P1 cross C, right? The Cartesian product of the two two examples here, right? Yeah. Okay. You've got um, the petzl surfaces, the petzl surfaces, right? So, um, so not every the petzl surface emits a killer Einstein metric, but those that don't emit a killer Ricci soliton, right? So because they're toric and there's no obstruction, so every the petzl surface emits a killer Ricci soliton, um, and uh, that's it, really. Okay, great. Okay, so let's go back to my picture. So let's assume, so let's go back to the behavior that we know exists in two dimensions. Let's assume all these singularities are type one, right? So that's not known. In fact, there's examples in higher dimensions that aren't of type one, right? But let's just make that assumption. Look at the blow up points and see what examples appear. All right. So, okay, so let's look at the first guy, right? So this is non-collapsing, right? So the blow up points occur along these exceptional divisors, right? Then you're on the keeler flow, so these exceptional divisors contract to a point, and what you will blow off is going to be FIK, right? The two-dimensional FIK solid, right? So, um, so you blow up the FIK examples here, and in fact, um, so this was constructed by John Song, right? Working on, I mean, he takes he constructs an example where actually this happens. All right, okay, great. So now let's look at this last example. Right? Okay. So, so this is Killer Einstein Fano. Oh, sorry, sorry. So this is. In the last example, the volume goes to zero and the diameter goes to zero, and you and the the, the petzl surface is being contracted to a point, right? So you do a parabolic rescaling. What example do you think you're going to blow off? You're going to blow off at the petzl surface. So that's the example coming off here. So um, so in this case, you just blow off a uh, a petzl surface, um, a petzl surface, um, just ref right. So this is the behavior of the static model, just being contracted to a point. And it's also behavior, I mean, and that's that's what, I mean, that, and that reflects the behavior of the ambient flow, all right? So then the example we care about is this guy, all right? So um, so if, if the volume goes to zero, if you, and the diameter doesn't go to zero, right? So then you're collapsing, um, but it's it's not a finite time extinction, right? So then the, the, the curvature blows up everywhere, right? Because the whole thing's being contracted to a point, right? So let's do some rescaling and see what happens. So. Um, okay, great. Uh, okay, so you still get your negative one curves here. So you can blow up along a fiber, right? Right. So you're right. You can you, you can take a fiber point and you can blow up along a fiber. So you're locally p one cross c, right? If you're away from these exceptional points, and in that case, what you will blow off is um, a p one cross c, right? Which just models the corresponding c is. So the c factor is invariant, right? It doesn't move, and then p one contracts to a point. So this, this example reflects the behavior there. Right. So now the punchline is what happens when you rescale along um, a P1, right? So this seems to be what people didn't do, all right? So if you rescale along a P1, where you know the curvature blows up, right? Then you do a parabolic blow up. So if you assume it's type one, which you don't know, 
then you should blow off a soliton, right? A string ingredient killer each soliton, all right? So, um, so the underlying manifold should be P1 cross C blown up at a point, right? So, um, so the underlying manifold should be P1 cross C blown up at a point. And this guy should um, admit a string ingredient killer each soliton, all right? So, um, so when you just analyze what was already known, you can see that there's this candidate example of a new example, all right? So, um, so what we were able to do was basically, um, well, I guess I listed several works there, but I, so basically with, um, all right, well, let me just state the result. So, so what we were able to do was construct the soliton on this new example appearing, all right? So we were able to um, show the P1 cross C blown up at a point, does indeed emit a shrinking green and killer reduced soliton. Um, and in fact, it's toric, which is kind of why we were able to construct it. Um, and so there's two facts here. The first fact is that this guy exists. The second fact is there's no more in two dimensions, right? So that's kind of the combination of everything. So, um, so let me state a clean result, right? And you can see from the picture that there shouldn't be any more, right? Because there's no more cases to, 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 to clarify. Okay, so, um, so basically the list of papers I wrote down initially was showing that, that this completes the classification, right? Okay, so the, the main theorem is as follows. So theorem, um, so this is the main theorem from um, CCP. This is joint work of Bumler. So, um, so there exists a unique complete um, shrinking gradient killer which is oliton with bounded curvature, with bounded um, curvature um, on P1 cross C blown up at a point. Okay, so, right? So on P1 cross C, you've got the standard torus action, right? It just rotates the C and then it rotates the P1 fibers, right? So you blow, you're blowing up at a fixed point in this action. So this is also a torque manifold, right? Which preserves the exceptional divisor, right? So, um, so this example is actually invariant under this torus action. It's invariant under the torus action. The torus action. Right? Okay, so that's why we know it's unique from this result of Charlie. So he proved uniqueness in his thesis. Okay, so we've constructed the soliton, and then you can ask, does it actually appear as a model? Right. So you've got this candidate model which you construct, and then you want to know. Remember, we don't know that these are type one singularities in general, but then you want to know, does it actually appear as a parabolic rescaling of a Kilarici flow? And the answer is yes. In fact, that's how we constructed it. Um, and it and it appears, and it appears um, as a parabolic blow up, a parabolic rescaling, rescaling of um, the Kilarici flow. All right. And then the second part, so the time. So then the second part of the theorem says um, that this completes the classification, right? So your complete list is that one. What word plus yes, just that one. Okay. So um, in the last two minutes, let me um, just tell you how we constructed this thing. So, so in general, if you want to construct, I mean, the power of Keeler geometry is because a Keeler form is locally a function. You can reformulate this equation in terms of a, of a PDE, a complex modular power equation. Um, so the standard way to construct such a solid term will be to solve this equation. Um, but as you know, for the killer einstein Benno case, it was a difficult problem, right? And so, so this is the analog, so it's also a hard problem, right? So, um, so to construct a soliton, we um, used Baumler's existence theory. So let me just give you 30 seconds as to how we did this, right? So we take, so we take P1 cross P1 and we've blown up at a point, right? And we constructed on this manifold a, Kieler, a toric Kieler-Ricci flow that modeled the singularity we wanted to find, right? So we constructed a, a Kieler form in this, which was toric, um, which can, which contracted to which where the fibers would just contract. All right. Um, so then, um, so then you do a so 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 this isn't too hard to do because it's all just determined by the cohomology classes. You just get the volumes of everything going to zero. So then you appeal to so then Richard has this. So then you look at Richard's theory, and Richard's theory is like even without the type one condition, you bubble off a shrinking gradient killer each soliton, right? So without this curvature condition, without the curvature blowing up 
that going over T, you still blow off a killer each, a shrinking green and killer each soliton, but the price you pay is that it might be singular, okay? But in four dimensions, this thing is um, has only overflow singularities, right? So, um, so the first thing is you want to get rid of the overflow singularities, so that we can do using the tericity, right? So, um, I don't remember how. So the tericity allows you to rule out the overflow singularities. Are you using what? The tericity. Oh, tericity. Yeah. Um, I need to just remember. So then you know it's complete, right? So then from previous work with everyone else, we had the, the list, the possible list. And then you just threw them off one by one and show that it has to be a new one. That was it. I mean, the, the paper itself is only 10 pages, but the bulk of the work was, and there's other, other things we said. One minute over, that's all I've got to say, really. Um, okay, great. Okay. Thanks for your attention. Other questions or remarks? Go to online. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I have a question. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud. Yeah, there, Vesti. Go ahead. So you sketch a proof that's very mysterious to me. So uh, what about if you just try to solve the PDE on uh, using the, the toric assumption on... Uh, well, yeah, we tried. And then? So we could solve it for t is equal to zero using another continuity method. There's no one, because you got to start from scratch. Um, so you set up the Abon continuity path. You can solve it for t is equal to zero, and then we couldn't solve it in general. It's too hard. You see, and, and the uniqueness is really as a toric uh, solution. Yeah. So as soon as you know, I mean, you know, you're, as soon as you're bonded, so you know your guy, so you know that, sorry. So when you know, when you do your rescaling, you've got bonded curvature. So then the work with Song and Alix tells you then your invariant under the maximal torus. And so then it tells you your toric, and then Charlie's thesis tells you you're unique. Okay, thank you. All right, cheers. Uh, the, let me add to the, the question of Vesti. So what make it easier to work with to construct uh, on P1 times P1 blown up at one point, back to C times P1? Uh, well, you want compact. You want a Ricci yeah. flow with a compact guy. Yeah, and then and then you can use the work Richards. Of yeah. So Richard is just it's a big hundred page paper that only he understands really. So we apply that. Okay. And then that tells you and then one of the assumptions is that it has to be compact. Uh, no, no. So you know, um so so the theory tells you that you blow off uh a shrinking gradient killer Ricci soliton, right? So then you know it has to be non-compact because if it's compact, it models the finite time extinction. But to 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 okay. So the result of of uh, Balmer is that there will be a it will be a, it will be a shrinker a shrinker. Yeah, but it's sing singular in general. The shrinker will be singular in general, but in four dimensions, the singularities are orbifold. Um, and the toricity rules them out, but I just can't remember how right now. Need to check. But uh, so then that's where the tericity is. So then you know it's smooth and non compact. And then in previous work, we showed it has to be one of these guys. And then you just rule them out, depending on the behavior that the model really. Well, I think in, uh, topologically, perhaps you can show that you have a orbifold covering. Uh, solving say that. it again, say it again. You, you may probably show directly that you have uh, orbifold covering. Uh, Resolving the singularities in your uh, restrained uh, toric picture. Um, it's just the polytope is such that if uh, yeah, you look at the polytope. Um, you you take you take three normals that generate a lattice, and then uh, this will be orbifold covering, which will be smooth, and, and you're done. Yeah, I don't remember. I just can't remember. It's not so good, is it? Uh, I thought of it as okay. So I think. Uh, I can't remember. That sounds so good. I can like go and check. Uh, give me a second. But we used the. Um, let's 
So I can't remember how to rule out the singularities, but you can rule out, I mean, you can rule out this guy being Fano because Fano reflects this going, Fano means you contract to a point, which isn't happening from your flow. Um, and then uh, you can rule out FIK because we show that FIK only appears if it's non-collapsed. So this is clearly collapsed. Um, so then that leaves P1 cross C or P1 cross C blown up at a point. And then we use an argument using the trivial P1s to construct a curve in this guy with trivial intersection or something. And I use some argument using curves sent through like that example, which means only the, the last one's there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I need to double check where the singularities ruled out. Remember? Yeah. Hi. So, so in the end, you, it's not a constructive proof. You, you don't solve an OD. Uh, no, it's not a constructive proof. Yeah. <clears throat> and it has to and be. If you replace a P1 by PN, the, the proof doesn't work. The proof doesn't work, no. Because it, the, 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 the singularities are all. Well, singularities are. Yeah, yeah. So it's very special to four dimensions. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what do you say? No, no. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Maybe I have some question of Frederic. Um, yeah, yeah, what was that? Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, when we find the solution in uh, P1 times C, uh, the pullback, um, the blow ups of P1 times C, so this surface is not minimal. So, what about the model? So, the minimal model of P1 times C? Which is the projectivization. Sorry, I don't say it again. Sorry, sorry, say again. So I, I said that you find solution um in the pullback uh, in the blow-ups of P1 times C. And this surface is not minimal. So it's not minimal. Yeah, exactly. But that's yeah, yeah. So what about the minimal model of P1 times C? So you can say something about that or so if but the minimal model. No, what do you mean? No, no, but but the minimum model of P1 cross P1 blown up at a point. So P, P1 times P1 is uh, is minimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But if we change P1 by by another curve, just uh, bigger genius. So P1 times C is not minimal. So when we take also the blue ups is not minimal. There are minus one curve. Yeah. And event solution in this type of surface. So what about the minimal model of this surface? So the minimum model of this surface? Of P1 times C. So P1 times C is? So it's not minimal, right? So well, there's no negative one curves, right? Yes, there is minus P1 one. times C. Yeah. Well, the trivial, the, the curves are trivial intersection. P1 times C, right? The curves are all zero and zero. No, 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 it's not minimal. So, uh, I don't know. So P P one cross Cartesian product, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's so it, it's non compact, right? So then, um, C is not compact. You mean C is the complex plane? What, what do you mean by C? C is curve, a compact curve. Oh, so C is just compact curve. So in that case, the flow exists for all time. If C is a compact curve, yeah, and you've got the fibers of its genus greater than or equal to one, then I think the flow exists for all time. Okay. So, right. Thanks. No, that's not necessarily true. But, oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I guess in that case, it'll be this collapsing behavior. And then you bubble off the P1 times C model because it's local. You're doing a local blow up. Yeah. And all these. Um, so, basically, um, so you're looking at whatever. So, like C cross. Um, P1, and then you can you can blow it up at a point. Yeah. Then because you're rescaling, right? You do this parabolic rescaling to get the model. Um, so the limit will only take into account local behavior on the manifold near the blow up point. So the topology locally will be reflected in the model. Right. So if you take so if you take P1 times C with finitely many blow up points, and you choose a metric so, it, so that it collapses, then it'll be the same behavior in the sense that. Um, so I guess I've erased it, but if you take a blow, if it collapses, right? So if you take a point on a, on a fiber with trivial intersection, then you blow off P1 times C. Because basically it's, it's just going to be like a disc cross P1 and that's being rescaled. 
and in the limit that will be the c times p1 um and then if if you do it on an exceptional so if you do it on an exceptional curve then it's just going to be it's just going to be p1 cross c blown up at a point and that's the local that's what you're locally right you're just going to be a disk cross p1 blown up at a point and then you just expand the disk basically as you do this rescaling because distances get sent to positive infinity you just you remember in the rescaling you multiply the metric by lambda and that just corresponds to you extend the time and then you you, you extend the the distances so the only topology that will be contained will be this, the negative one curve so in your case it'll be the same because it just depends on the local nature the local topology because that's all that's that, that's carried over whenever you do this blow up what do you expect in the mention i dimension? um you expect a similar so i mean i'll tell you what it did do so i looked at the um so okay so you're trying to construct these solitons on um you're trying to construct these solitons on so p well, let's take P1 cross C blown up at a point, right? So you can just try this game in general, right? So the soliton vector field. So um, so in order to solve it for T is equal to zero, right? You've got your model soliton here at infinity, right? This is P1 cross C. So that's what you expect to be the asymptotic model, right? So you look at the soliton vector field and that thing, it closes, right? P1, the soliton vector field is zero. Then the, the soliton vector field on C is just generates the C store action, right? So... So if you look at P1 times C blown up at a point, you can compute the soliton vector field as a minimum of some functional and the vector field closes, right? So then you can get the party started, right? By trying to solve the modulus on her equation. Um, so then it, I, I computed it for P2 cross C blown up at a point, it just didn't close. It was just so annoying. So we wrote this paper solving it for T is equal to zero, right? The paper is presented as D times C blown up at a point or something, right? Where D is just any toric. But one of the conditions that it works is that the vector field, the solid one vector field closes because you need that to get the model at infinity, right? And the only example is if, if it's P1. So it's really frustrating. So it's not clear. Um, I would expect if it's toric, there shouldn't be a problem. But I can't even get the vector field to close. I mean, the point is in the compact case, toricity, you always have a, a, a shrinker in the compact case. And there's no reason to believe that in the non-compact case shouldn't have, but this vector field just screws it all up. So um so set, I mean if you take I mean if you take um Pn times P1 grown up at a point, then you can always construct flows that attract, you know, contract to a base. And so this there's a place for this model to fit, right? In general theory, but I don't be able to seem to construct it. The vector field doesn't close. So I don't know. You can, I mean, you can't apply Baumler's theory because it's just, it's just special for four dimensions. So we just got to sort of, yeah. So at the point being, I don't even know how to solve, set up the motion pair equation, right? So that the data goes to zero. That's the point, right? I can't even set that up unless the vector field closes. Which it only goes in, in two dimensions. So another criterion is that for this uh, characterizing this type one singularities. Yeah. So can we know, let's say, a priori when we are going to be in that, let's say, nice uh, situation? Or... So I think that's an open problem. So, um, so it's not even known. And I think at one point it was thought that all Kilarichi flow singularities were type one. Mm. But, um, but then Tian and Zhu construct. I think it was Tian and someone constructed examples in dimensions three and up where, where it's just not. Um, so if you're, tor if you're, if you're, if you're PN and your PN blown up at a point and your matrix invariant under UN symmetry, then it's known. Okay. That's the result of John's song. Yeah, this is also similar to, to what you said at the end of this, uh, construction, right? That you can use the torus action to be sure that there are no actual, uh, all these singularities. Right. So we, yeah, we end up showing that this is a type one singularity. Um, 
I need to remember that argument, but come. So it's not known, yeah. If you just take a general metric, it's but I think people care less about that now thanks to Baumler's theory, right? Since you just get a solid one anyway with singularities. That's my impression. Okay. So if there is no extra question on Mars, now let's send this here. 